Awesome. Sir, <laughs> oh. hey, welcome, back, sir. Welcome to uh, the live stream of uh, VR Church live from uh, VR Chat. And uh, <laughs> hey, Pine. <laughs> today, today we go over uh, X sixteen. Is it right? I think it's sixteen. So uh, yeah. So, uh, hey, there's Jenny. How do you know? There's Jenny. Jenny. No, so we're gonna get Woo-hoo! started uh, shortly. Okay, that's the whole point of the alt account. Oh, fuck. You might need to make one. You might need to make one as well. What do I need to do? Let's go. Let's go. Uh, no, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I think everyone just crashed on me. Oh no. Hey, did everyone just crash? Is that me? Um hold on friends. I think we're having some issues. Let me check if my internet is mixer dot com. Uh, let's see if the stream is alright. Oh, wait, people are popping out. Oh, okay. Oh, something is happening. I have to restart my... I'm gonna restart my game. I am sorry about that. Yeah, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. All right, everyone. So, um, we seem Marcos, to be back. Is everybody crashing then? So, yes, yes, oh, okay, I think so. so. Everybody was crashing. Everybody else crashed. Everyone crashed. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think everyone, everyone crashed. crashed. Everyone crashed. No. <laughs> I'm glad. It, I'm glad at least it's you know not just me. So I know it's a problem with all the There's the big door. A big reboot. <laughs> Okay. All right. We're Did back. we crash? Did anybody else crash or just me? No, we all time back. I crashed. No, uh, I did we? That was weird. All right. Oh, just a little bit better, even just a little bit. Or no. What's up, dude? Watch out! I gotta use this real quick. I'm glad that you were able to come. Thanks, my man. You're all right. <laughs> And all right can everyone hear me uh, i'm sorry about the crash if you guys can hear me um so uh, we're still uh, working on this world so if you can hear me okay um if i stand here over here by the panel my voice should go anywhere all across the room okay so feel free to kind of spread out and hold on one second i got a cough why do you sound like a pilot I guess let's go to that same spot as last time. Uh, like, um, ladies and gentlemen. You sound like you're telling everyone that there's going to be church on. Yeah, we're about to start church right now. All right, guys. Um, so let's do some tests. If you guys can hear me, throw out some emojis, a heart, thumbs up. Yep. Because I can't hear you. All right, so you guys can hear me Perfect. all the way over there. All right, good, good. <laughs> 
Yeah. All right. Welcome, guys. Uh, welcome to our uh, VR church service. Uh, Pastor Lena, if you want to join me on stage, um, let's talk about announcements here in a second. Okay. Um, and we'll get started in 30 seconds. And so, yeah, we'll get we'll begin soon. Hold on one second. Uh, amplify it for everyone. <laughs> All right, guys. What's up, Architect? What's going on? All right, everybody. Welcome to welcome to VR Church. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started today. Just want to welcome everyone to church. Good to see you. Um, I kind of dig this world. I know it's like a little different. It feels like a Star Wars council room. Um, and we'll talk about, actually, we're having a council this week, so we'll talk about that in <laughs> one safe. second <laughs> in here. But um, yeah, so welcome, guys. Good to see you. Whatever part of the world you're from, one of the things we love to say about VR Church is that everyone is welcome. It doesn't matter if you believe in God or not. Maybe you're an atheist or an agnostic or a Presbyterian or Catholic or, or I'm not sure what you might be, but you're welcome just to hang out, be a part of our community. And uh, I have one of our pastors. So, by the way, let me pause real quick and just say this. Uh, if this is your first time coming to church in VR, um, you know, one question we get a lot is, are you, is this a real church and are you a real pastor? Because it confuses people. And the answer is yes, we are a real church in virtual reality. We exist entirely in VR. We don't have a physical location. And we have volunteers and leaders and elders and uh, church leaders and uh, pastors as well. So, uh, yeah, it is kind of a new thing. And for those of you that have been with us for a while, you're familiar with VR Church. But if you haven't, I just wanted to give you a frame of reference. Um, and so, yeah, this is something I wanted to chat about. Uh, before we go into the, we, we like to spend some time reading the Bible and then spending some time in prayer. Our church services aren't very long, so because some of you might be like, wait a minute, I've been to church before. It was like two hours long. Now, no worries. Uh, we probably go 20, 30 minutes. Uh, so. Unless Pastor Lena is, is preaching, then it's like two hours. Um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I have one of our pastors of VR Church here with us, Pastor Lena, uh, who's going to tell us about uh, our Discord server and life groups. Absolutely. Thank you, Pastor Soto. Awesome. Uh, I don't remember. Do we have slides that coordinate or I just say it? I think I just said no, it. No, right? we don't have slides. Yeah. Okay, sweet. Awesome. Well, welcome, everybody. I'm so excited to see you all here today. Um, this is awesome. Uh, so exciting. But uh, as Pastor Soda was saying, I have just a few announcements. Uh, first of all, Discord. Discord is where the life of the church happens uh, all day, every day, throughout the week. Um, so if you haven't joined our Discord server, I highly, highly encourage you to do so. So um, if you do one thing, that should be the one thing. Um, and to join our Discord server, you just go to vrchurch.org. Really easy to remember. There's a drop-down menu there, um, and it says join Discord. So once you're in Discord, it's there's so much going on. There's just like we're just chatting, hanging out. Um, there are people there that are, will pray for you uh, if you're in need of prayer really awesome um this is where you'll find out like because we do so much more than just sunday services so much more there's almost always something going on and in discord is where you'll find all that information as well when where and and how to get to um these events because they're across multiple platforms vr chat alt space rec room um and more and more to come as we grow so you find all that out in discord via vrchurch.org um, and so one of those events I was talking about is life groups we have these really awesome groups where we gather in smaller groups usually between like six and ten or so um, and then we just meet and we're there to encourage one another and, and and we're there to pray for you like I call it more in person I guess I call it here vr in person so we're there to pray for you in person um as well as discuss our our different insights on uh scripture as well because we all are given something important um through the holy spirit and it's it's incredible when we can learn from one another 
um, and what you perceive. And sometimes we're going to just go out and play games. Um, we do all sorts of stuff. Uh, I think last time we were just kind of traveling around meeting people out in the metaverse um, and hoping to like share the Lord uh, or pray for people just impromptu. So we've got lots going on in uh, life groups and it all starts Discord and vrchurch.org. That's how it all begins. Yeah. Awesome. So I hope yeah. to see one of those. Yeah. 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 That's it. All right. Thank yeah. you. Uh, thank you, Pastor Lena. <clears throat> Appreciate no that. Problem. And uh, if you join our Discord server, if you haven't before, uh, send a message to me and Pastor Lena so we know who you are. And especially if your name is different than your VR chat name, that can kind of get confusing. Uh, but yeah, guys, we're going to start out with a uh, with some looking through the book of Acts in the Bible. We've been studying, that's the book we've been studying for uh, several months, and it's been a really good book. We'll talk about that in a second. But I wanted to do a little something uh, different. I, we have four church services on a Sunday. Alt space, VR chat, and what I did in Alt space a little bit ago, and I think I want to do it here in VR chat, is I want to pray for everyone. Um, you know, particularly those who are not feeling well. I have a cold, by the way, so if you hear me go mute for a couple seconds, uh, that probably means I'm coughing or trying not to hack up a lung. So um, that's just what that is. Um, and but you know, even before the cold came, you know, I just know people in our church and our community are going through a difficult time. Uh, maybe you're sick, maybe you're ill, maybe you have a condition, a disease, or, you know, something's going on with you. And then I thought, oh, you know what? I want to pray for those people. But then I thought, you know what? It's sometimes, some of us, and don't take this wrong, I'm not saying you're mentally sick, but sometimes our brain gets sick and there's like uh, um, depression and anxiety and, and, a, and our emotions, emotional disorders and addictions and loneliness and, um, and, and stuff like that. So I wanted to take a moment to pray uh, for everyone in here before we go into to the Bible's uh, Bible verses, and uh, the way we did in alt space, and I'll do it here as well. And you don't don't feel like you have to, but if you if there's something that's going on physically, you have the cold, the flu, something serious, you know, uh, depression, anxiety, you know, we're just going to pray for healing for all of these things. If something is going with you right now, just uh, send out an emoji of some type, um, just so I can see it. Maybe give me a little wave, and I just want to see who I can pray for um, in, in the church service today. All right, I see some I see some emojis over here to my left and my right. And uh, yeah, several people going through some type of illness. And so I just wanted to acknowledge you guys and gals, and I want to pray for you right now. So let's pray. Um, God, I just want to take a moment to pray for everyone in here, and specifically those who are sick, who are ill. Maybe it's something wrong with their body, or maybe it's their mind or their emotions. And God, we know that you want to bring healing to people's lives. That is undeniable. We see that over and over in the Bible about how God heals people. God wants to heal. And so, God, whatever people are going through, whatever illness they're facing in their body, their mind, or their emotions, God, I just pray that the, the Holy Spirit would move right now and to heal each and every person. God, um, maybe you would do that right now in a miraculous way. Or perhaps, God, there is a journey of healing. I, I see in the Bible, we take people on a journey to heal. It's a pathway. So, God, help us to walk by faith in that pathway. Maybe you'll do it through medicine or a doctor or maybe through natural means or a miracle. I don't know how you're going to heal us. But I know that you do want healing to come. And I do know that you want your children to be healed. You don't like to see your children sick. So, God, we just ask for your healing. And we want to look, walk in faith along this pathway of healing that you have for us. And I pray specifically for everyone who sent out an emoji, God, that you would heal them and heal them today. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. All right, well, let's spend a, a few moments uh, looking at the book of Acts. This is a, the sermon for today. Uh, so if you're just popping in, thanks for coming to church. Um, good to see you. And uh, we're just going to go into our sermon. It's only going to be about 10 minutes, so no worries. Plus, I have a cold. So I'm going to keep this one short uh, so I don't lose my voice too much. we got still got one more service today. But we've been studying the book of Acts. And so uh, there's a lot to it because we are in chapter 16. Or you can kind of think of it like an episode in a miniseries. I don't know if you have a favorite, like, Netflix show you like to watch, Prime, Disney+, Plus, you know, all these different things. And you can kind of think of it as a miniseries. So we're in Acts episode 16. So there's a lot that has been missed up to this point if you, if you haven't been following us. And that's okay because, you know, you can just kind of Google the, the book of Acts in the Bible. 
Um, and you'll see there's a lot of different websites that have the Book of Acts. And one thing I encourage you to do is look for a good translation because the Bible has been translated in all types of languages. And so you want to find a modern translation. Um, that would, that's what I would recommend, unless you like those older archaic ones. It's totally up to you. Um, but, you know, the older ones are like, hitherto thou come forth, hitherto, you know, that type of stuff. And a modern translation would just say, come here. <laughs> you know, so um, that's what I encourage you to do. Google the Book of Acts. Uh, there's a great app called the Version Bible app uh, for your smartphone. And just read what's been going on. And I don't mean to oversimplify the Book of Acts because there's a lot. But if I could just boil it down to a few things, and that's that God wants us to experience his love and God wants us to experience his power. Man, and, and not only that, he wants his love and power to go all across the world. And in our church, all across the metaverse, he wants everyone to know. He's not going to, you know, I'm, I'm saying this symbolically. He's not going to put a gun up to your head and say, hey, you know, you better believe in me. And, you know, th you know that type of thing. Put your hand behind your back. No, but he wants everyone, at, in the very least, to know that he loves you, that the gods aren't angry. He's not this angry God going to send judgment down and lightning bolts that he actually loves you and that he wants you to know that he loves you. And he wants to, you to live a life full of power. None of this like barely getting by in life and just struggling and always broke and poor and depressed and always like that. Nope. That's not what God wants. He wants you to live a victorious life filled with power, filled with love. And he wants you to know, and we saw this in the last episode that following him, that believing in him is not like, you know, joining a cult or, following all these rules and regulations. No, that's religion. Bad religion is real arrogant, and it controls people with fear and manipulation. But the way of Jesus is about life and liberty and love. And so it's not fo about following all these laws. There's actually one law, and that's the law of love, our love for each other, our a love for you guys. You know what? I, I'm just going to be honest with you. I just have a love for this church, for the people that are here. It is nothing but love to each and every one of you. And I sense that spirit with you too. There's just such a loving attitude amongst our community. And that is what makes God smile. That's what makes God happy. You know, it's not like, okay, guys, everyone follow 500 rules this week, and maybe you can appease the gods. No, there's one rule to follow. And that's the rule of love, love for God, our, our others, and ourself, by the way. Don't forget to take care of yourself. You know, don't treat yourself like a jerk. If, uh, treat yourself with respect and kindness and love as well. Um, so anyways, there's a lot that's happened in the book of Acts. And, um, but another thing that we want to think about is Acts is the, the story of the first ever church. So maybe in your city or town, you see a temple or a mosque or a church or a cathedral or, or whatever. And that's great, by the way. There's nothing wrong with that. But what this is in the book of Acts is the first ever church, a handful of men and women who started this church. They started meeting in houses, by the way. They didn't have like a temple or a place to meet. They, made, they were meeting in houses day by day, praying, encouraging. It was really beautiful. And um, so the message of God's love is being spread throughout the world. And that's what we're saying is that this isn't like a, a country club or, a, you know, us Christians only you know God's love and power is for the world. And so here in Acts chapter 16, we're going to read about Paul. He's one of the early church founders, one of the very first church fathers. And you will see him setting an amazing example for us about how we just need to keep spreading the love of God, man, taking that love with us and spreading it all over the world and all over the metaphors. So uh, let's read a little bit about Acts chapter 16. Let's read about uh, the Apostle Paul, who's, who's a great example of taking this love everywhere. Even when, you know, even when he got uh, like difficulties or challenges, he got thrown in jail. He sets a good example for us that even when we spread the love, you know, sometimes we'll be made fun of. You know, maybe some people, you yeah, wait, you go to VR church, man, you're crazy. You know, people will say things and do things. But Paul sets in a great example of, you know what, we just still need to love each other. We still don't love people that hate us. So uh, let's dive right in to uh, Acts chapter. Uh, uh, Pine, do you want to come read for me a little bit? Because my voice is going to, with this cold, uh, is going to kill me a little bit here. But Or maybe someone else, I don't see Pine. Oh, there's that Pine up there. 
Pine, can I put you on the spot and come up up to the stage to read? Now let's do a sound test since you're on the quest. I'm assuming it works, architect. So uh, come up here on stage and maybe start talking. What's that? Okay, cool. Uh, Pine, help a, a sick uh, pastor here. And do you mind uh, reading a um, little bit of the X? Can you hear me? I can't oh, hear Pine. Oh, sorry. Uh, it's just, it's because it's laggy for me. Your voice is slowed down. Oh, uh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Do you mind uh, reading uh, the, for these two? Yeah. That's cool. Sure thing. Sure thing, sure thing. All right. Paul went first to Derb and then to Lystra where there was a young disciple named Timothy. His mother was a Jewish believer, but, it, but his father was a Greek. Timothy was well taught of by the believers in Lystra and Iconium, so Paul wanted him to join them on their journey. In defense to the Jews of the area, he arranged for Timothy to be circumcised before they left, for everyone knew that his father was a Greek. Then they went from town to town, instructing the believers to follow the decisions made by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem. So the church, so the churches were strengthened in their faith and grew larger every day. Awesome, thanks, Pine. If you don't mind hanging around uh, to help my voice, that'd be awesome. Um, so, a couple things. Paul is going on this journey. Hey, man, the love of God, the power of God, needs to be spread across the world. And so, let's go on this journey. Let's let's head out. Um, and they went from town to town. I love this idea where God wants his message of love to go everywhere, from every town to every city to every family to every country. Uh, in the Bible, in the early parts of the Bible, we see that God wants his love um, to be experienced by every nation on this earth, whether you're from China or Australia or uh, Trinidad. Someone was here is from Trinidad I met. And wh wherever you're from, God wants you to his love and his power to be experienced everywhere. That's such a that's such a beautiful thing. And and maybe well, let me put it this way. The reason I think it's important to say that is because some of us have experienced church or religion that was very inclusive, like us and no one else. But no, that's not how God works. He wants his love to go everywhere and he wants to make sure that it goes to all parts of the world and for everyone to experience it. And I love how uh, they went town to town. This let's get this word out. And the churches were strengthened in their faith and grew larger every day. That's such a just a beautiful thing. All right, let's uh, Pine, if you don't mind helping me out, and let's read the next one. No, I can't hear you, Pine. Yeah, sorry, your your voice is really late. Really my lag, my lagging. Right, cool. Yeah, yeah, you're lagging. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Next, Paul and Silas traveled through the area of Phryg Phrygia and Gal Galatia because the Holy Spirit had prevented them from preaching the word in the province of Asia at that time. Then coming to the borders of Mysia, they headed north for the province of Bith Bithynia. But again, the spirit of Jesus did not allow them to go there. So instead, they went on through Mysia to the seaport of Troas. Ah, oh, great. Uh, perfect pine. Um, and so when we're reading the Bible, oftentimes, where did my left hand go? Oh, there it is. Oftentimes, there's like these big general lessons, and then there's like mini lessons sprinkled in between. And you know what I see here? is like some of us are frustrated because, you know, we feel like things are being prevented in our lives. So in, in this travel, Paul was prevented from going to um, Asia, and then he was prevented from going to uh, Bithynia. Um, so sometimes we get frustrated when things are blocked or not happening. But you know what? We have to take a moment to consider that maybe God is doing that for our protection, or maybe there's something better along the way or he's doing something particular for our lives. So let's not get frustrated. If things are getting blocked in our lives, like, Pastor, I really wanted that job, man, I didn't get it, I'm so discouraged, or I wanted to get in that school, I wasn't accepted, oh, I thought I'd have that boyfriend for the rest, you know, that's not working out. And But you know what? You know, don't get frustrated, just stay in faith. Let your 
faith grows stronger and stronger every day. Because sometimes God guides our lives in the way that he wants us to go. Because maybe he would have known, you know, if you'd gone to that school, you wouldn't have reached your potential. No, if you would have stayed in that relationship, um, th- you know, that would have been harmful for you. And at the time, we get super frustrated, right, man? Like, man, come on. You know, things are just blocked in my life. And, you know, and there might be an aspect where you pray for breakthrough. You pray for, you know, uh, some type of divine intervention. But also just take time to consider, man, you know what? Maybe God just has something better for me along the way. Maybe there's a different school or a job or relationship. And that's hard because that's faith and that's patience. And that's difficult to do, uh, to be patient there. Um, all right, let's do the uh, let's see, poem. The next one, Pine. I can reach it. And there we go. All right. Okay. <laughs> that night, Paul had a vision. A man from Macedonia in northern Greece was standing there pleading with him come over to macedonia and help us so we decided to leave for macedonia at once having concluded that god was calling us to preach the good news there we boarded a boat at troas and sailed straight across to the island of samothrace and the next day we landed at neopolis from there we reached philippi a major city of that district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. And we stayed there several days. Oh, beautiful. And I, I love this idea where, okay, those other things didn't work out because God had something special in Macedonia where they were going to go preach the good news. And, you know, one thing that we talked about is the idea of how, how Paul used, I know this sounds weird, but just hang with me for a second, how Paul used technology. It said we boarded a boat. That was transportation technology. Uh, uh, basically, the boat symbolizes a method of transportation to take something from point A to point B. And so what you'll realize is that God is inventive and creative, and he loves when we are inventive and creative. And we use technology to take his message, his good news everywhere. And so for Paul, you know, he didn't have a smartphone. He didn't have the Internet. But you know what? He had a boat. And that represented a form of technology or transportation. And so for us, what are some ways we can spread this good news, this, this love of God to the world? How can we do that? Is it, you know, you know through social media or I, I don't know, maybe there's some, uh, you know, through Fortnite or World of Warcraft, you know, there's, there's a lot of cool things that we can do. And for a VR church, it's virtual reality. I mean, think about this. This is crazy. Can you imagine the Apostle Paul? I mean, this, he, he lived about 2,000 years ago-ish, maybe a little less than that bringing him and like teleporting there, bringing him over here in time machine and be like, yo, check out this church. Let me put this Oculus Quest on you real quick. And then he would meet all you guys. I think he would just be blown away. Like, what the heck? Can you, church history could not have imagined this moment of a church in VR. Yet here we are. And so that's a beautiful use of technology. And I love hearing the stories that you guys have with people, talking with people, encouraging people, praying with people. Man, that's taking God's love, and you did it through a virtual or a digital like interaction. Man, that's just like the pioneer, the Apostle Paul, hopping on a boat, going from town to town, going from metaverse to metaverse like we do to spread God's love. Man, that's that's some good stuff. All right, let's go to the next one. Whenever you're ready. All right. We boarded a boat at Troas and sailed straight across to the island of Samothrace. And the next day, we landed at Neapolis. From there, we reached Philippi, a major city of that district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We stayed there several days. On the Sabbath, we went a little way outside the city to a riverbank, where we thought people would be meeting for prayer. And we sat down to speak with some women who had gathered there. We gathered there. One of them was Lydia from Thyatira, a merchant of expensive purple cloth who worshipped God. All right. Thank you, Pine, and thank you for tackling those hard words. Um, Those are some tough ones. Um, All right, let me go to the next one. I'll read the next one just for time. 
Um, but and then Pine, if you can come up and do the other one after that. So here's Lydia. So as she listened to us, the Lord opened her heart and she accepted what Paul was saying. She and her household were baptized and she asked us to be her guest. If you agree that I am a true believer in, in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my home. And she, she urged us and so we agreed. One day, as we were going down to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a future, who had a spirit that enabled her to tell the future. That's crazy. She earned a lot of money for her masters by telling fortunes. She followed Paul at the and the rest of us, shouting, "These men are servants of the Most High God, and they have come to tell you how to be saved." So, a couple things before we move on, and Pine, you can read the next one. I, I love this idea that, that listen. Um, when you're spreading God's love as you're living your life for God, sometimes things are not just going to work out. Some people will make fun of you. Some people don't want to listen to you. But some people like Lydia will accept what you're saying. And that's such a beautiful moment. So don't get discouraged if symbolically you're not allowed into Asia or, or Pamphylia or, you know, if you can't go here or there or someone makes fun of you or this or that. You know, you know right now, don't let that bother you. Stay in faith. Because there's someone like Lydia out there waiting for you to be a voice of love and encouragement and faith. Well, the story gets a little crazy, and we just got a few more verses before we end, but this is what happens. Um, they meet a, a, a little girl um, who was a, a slave girl, so, and she had this ability to tell the future, and uh, people were making a ton of money off her. I mean, this is bad stuff. I mean, I can't you know imagine today's society that someone would enslave a girl who could tell the future and she made them a lot of money and they probably made a ton i mean you think like in the u.s tonight is the super bowl and bets are being made on the super bowl can you imagine if there was just a girl out there who knew the outcome of the super bowl and man you would make a ton of money well uh something's about to happen that gets a little crazy so pine reading the next one um up there would be great Okay. This went on day after day until ba Paul got so exasperated that he turned and said to the demon within her, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And instantly it left her. Her master's hopes of wealth were now shattered, so they grabbed Paul and Silas and dragged them before the authorities at the marketplace. The whole city is in, is in an uproar because of these Jews, they shouted to the city officials. They are teaching customs that are illegal for us Romans to practice. All right. I want you to go ahead. <coughs> Excuse me. My voice is going here. <coughs> Do the next one for me. A mob quickly formed against Paul and Silas, and the city officials ordered them stripped and beaten with wooden rods. They were severely beaten, and then they were thrown into prison. The jailer was ordered to make sure they didn't escape, so the, the jailer put them into the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in the stocks. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly, there was a massive earthquake, and the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open, and the chains of every prisoner fell off. Excellent, excellent. Let's have you read the next one. The only thing I have to say about this that I love is that uh, God's love, no matter, you know, arrogant religion can try to put God's love in a prison and in a box and try to contain it, but it can't be contained. It's going to break out. It's going to find its way. Um, and so anyways, uh, just a couple more uh, verses, Pine, and we'll be done. All right. The jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. He assumed the prisoners had escaped, so he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted to him, Stop! Don't kill yourself! We are all here! The jailer called for lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? 
Ah, very, very important question, man. This is kind of like where the rubber meets the road, the nitty gritty. This is where you boil everything down. This guy wanted to know, and how can I be saved? It's another way of how can I be made right with God? Is it money? Is it grades? Is it your status? And I love the response that we're going to show you right here. And Pine, if you don't mind reading this to finish off our church service. They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved along with everyone in your household. And they shared the word of the Lord with him and with all who lived in his household. Even at that hour of the night, the jailer cared for them and washed their wounds. Then he and everyone in his household were immediately baptized. He brought them into his house and set a meal before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced because they all believed in God. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, Pine, um, for reading that for us. Um, and that is, it, it's it's not about, you know, how much money you have. It's not about how much, you know, what's your status, your grades. Thank God it's not any of those things, right? It's just simple faith, believing in God for the forgiveness of our sins. Man, that's such good news. All this guilt and regret and shame and failure and, and sickness and disease, all these things. You know, is want God wants to bring healing and forgiveness, and it's not. Okay, I wasn't sure if that was me crashing or if that was Pastor no, Soto, he, but he it was yeah. Pastor Soto. Yes, yes, yes. Um, he'll be back in a moment, but uh, yeah, I'll just it, just kind of keep on here uh, while he's gone. But yes, the simplicity of um, of being saved that it's 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 not all these the super duper long list, and you have to be good enough, smart enough, rich enough. Uh, whatever your status may be, that it is simply just believing in, in, in Jesus as your Savior and loving God, allowing him to love you. Receiving that love is amazing. And, 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 and that's it. It's that simple. Um, and once you do that and, and, and the Lord, like, resides inside of you, um, then he'll start moving you, strengthening you, encouraging you, guiding you um, into all the wonderful things that, you, that the Lord has in store for you. But yes, um, it's not complicated. And it looks like we have him back. Welcome back. Oh, thank you, uh, Pastor Lita. I just I got booted into my home yes, room yes. from home space. But yeah. no, was, you keep going. That was beautiful. Couldn't have said it, couldn't have said it better. Do you have any other thoughts? Um, no, uh, that was basically my thoughts is, is um, how simple it is and, and then how amazing it is for something so simple. I mean, the amazing work that he'll do and changes he'll make in your life when you, when you accept his love. And um, it's, yeah, it's very exciting. So if you haven't um, done so already, um, not pressuring, I'm just saying um, I'm excited for you if, if, if this is a thought that, that you're having of it. Accepting his love. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor Lena. Powerful. Uh, well, now that you're up here, uh, why don't you close this out in a word of prayer? Close our church service up. Uh, just a quick announcement before she uh, closes. Uh, to join our Discord server. Love to have you join there because uh, you can join our live groups in VR chat on Wednesday. Um, either me or Lena lead uh, one in the morning or afternoon. Uh, architect over here leads the evening service. Uh, or life group for VR chat. And then on Tuesday, I think it's Tuesday. I have to check the church calendar. Uh, we'll be back in here for the ver very first church council. We call it the council of the avatars. Um, so we'll be back here. It's just where we uh, talk to the church about, you know, things that we're doing and we want to get the church's opinions about things. So uh, feel free to come be a part of the church council of avatars. Um, this will be a historic moment, so I think it'd be fun if you could make it. Um, there's been a lot of church councils throughout history, the, the, the Council of Jerusalem and the Council of Nicaea. There's all these councils, and it'll be fun to have 
uh, one of the first church councils in virtual reality. We call it the Council of Avatars. Um, so feel free to join us here for that. It's on the church calendar. I forget the, I think it's Tuesday. I forget the time. But uh, Pastor Tuesday Lena, correct, feel, but I forget the time. Yeah, feel free to close us in prayer and then we'll jump in the pit to hang out and chat with everyone. Mm -hmm. So yeah, go. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Yes. Hmm. Um, Heavenly Father, as always, we come to you in gratitude. Um, so grateful, so grateful for your word that guides us, that gives us this encouragement um, that we need so desperately. Um, this, this strength and, and courage that we need to go forward even when things are not happening as we had expected or hoped. Lord, please instill in each of us that patience, that trust, that faith that we need to, to not only just like get through our disappointments when things don't work, but, but, but get through them well to the point that we're like, okay, whew, good thing that didn't happen. I know I have so much trust in the Lord that, that there's a reason for this and there, he's got something better planned for me. So, so that when, when we have these disappointments, Lord, we just want to feel your courage, your faith, your, your, the, the patience we need to wait to see what that plan is. Um, and we just are so grateful for these times you stop things in our tracks. We're always so grateful for the things that you do in our lives that we see. But, Lord, we are grateful for the things that you stop from happening in our lives. Um, and someday maybe we can look back and see. Oh, yes, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for not allowing that to happen. And and sometimes it's it's just beyond our comprehension and we or we just we miss it. But we um just want that faith in each of us so strong that we don't worry about that, that we just trust that this is your will and it's for our good. Um, because you do nothing that's not for our good. You love us so much, whether it's something that happens or something that doesn't happen. Lord, we know it's you watching out for us, and this is for our benefit, and you've got something else way better in store for us. We just want to thank you for that. And so, Lord, just fill us each with what we need. Um, we all need different things, healing, uh, financial help, courage patience and wisdom all of these things that we need to get through this next week this new next day this next hour lord we depend on you um at every moment in our life to guide us and encourage us and to love us i know lord a special prayer for those here that are suffering emotionally, uh, psychologically. Uh, for those that don't feel your love, you maybe some we have people that know like intellectually, yeah, I know, I know he loves us. But no, Lord, I beg you, implore you to put this in their heart so it's something that they can feel, that they can feel your presence and Feel your love in a way that is so strong that whatever is holding them back, whatever lies are being bombarded into their brains, into our brains, that you protect us from those. And instead, we just feel your love and your power, and this will conquer these things that are holding us back emotionally, psychologically. We just thank you um, so much. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.